Hi guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert of the Mathematics Development and Support Service at National College of Ireland uh, and in this short video uh, I want to consider uh, I suppose the difference between let's say undertaking analysis of variance compared to undertaking separate independent samples t-tests uh, uh, and in particular the, the probability associated with committing a type 1 error uh, in both scenarios okay so we're going to consider analysis of variance okay uh, uh, as opposed to undertaking separate separate independent samples t-tests okay and we're going to try to uh, let's say develop the probability associated with taking these independent samples t-tests uh, to see what the actual experiment was uh, wide uh, type 1 error rate would be okay so don't forget in analysis of variance let's say let's say in, in, in a simple case we might have three groups so we might have group a uh, we might have group b uh, and we might have group c okay uh, and we have measurements on them groups okay so maybe we have 40 50 60 some variable is measured okay uh, some 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 dependent variable maybe it's 25 75 and so on and so forth okay uh, maybe it's 82 81 and uh, 95 and so on okay but effectively what we have from analysis of variance perspective is that we have a number of groups typically more than more than two uh, and the question is whether there's differences in the average. I suppose the hypothesis itself, the hypothesis, the hypothesis has a null position, H0. Uh, in the three group scenario, the null is that mu of A equals mu of B uh, equals mu of C. And the alternative scenario is that mu of A is different to mu of B is different to mu of C. Actually, this notation here is just saying that at least one of the pairings, maybe A compared to B, uh, that their mean values are different. But what we know when we do an analysis of variance, we also set the significance level, okay? The significance, okay? The significance of the test is set at a particular level, alpha. Uh, let's say alpha is 0 0.05, okay? So when we undertake an analysis of variance, we're confident uh, that we're controlling for the type 1 error rate, the probability of incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. Okay. Um, so if we do reject, the significance is that we'll reject uh, knowing that we're willing to accept being wrong in that rejection 5% of the time, if that makes sense. So it's the probability of committing a type 1 error. And it's fixed for analysis of variance. Okay? Now, you might ask yourself, well, why don't I undertake separate independent samples t-tests? An independent samples t-test will be able to check to see whether two groups have been selected from populations that have different population means. Okay, So remember, in an independent samples t-test perspective, uh, the hypothesis the hypothesis okay uh, has a null position h0 and ha uh, and the null position is that the population mean for group one is the same as the population mean for group two uh, and then the alternative is that the population mean for group one is different to the population mean of group two we're not considering any directionality here we're just considering let's say a vanilla uh, independent samples t test we could uh, test the hypothesis that mu1 is less than mu2 or that mu1 is greater than mu2 but in this case let's just keep it simple uh, we we'll just want to test to see whether there's a difference between uh, between the means of the two populations okay and also we have a significance level we have a significance a level associated with the test uh, and in this case let's say alpha is equal to 0 0.05 okay so we know when we do an independent samples t-test that the probability of committing a type 1 error uh, is also 5% Okay. So the question now is, why don't we just do uh, all the possible independent samples t-tests across these particular groups? Yeah. So let's think about this. So an independent samples t-test compares two things. Okay. Uh, and in this scenario over here, I have three groups. So how many ways could I select two groups? two of them groups from the three possible groups. Well, there's a combinations formula that allows us to do that. So how many ways, how many ways, okay, uh, could we, could we select uh, two, two groups, okay, from the three here? Well, the answer is we have three groups in total and we want to know how many combinations of size two, taken two at a time, can we take from from the tree and the formula and only for for uh, let's say combinations ncr is equal to n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial 
So the formula represents given n groups, how many ways can we select all objects from them from them? Given n objects, how many ways can we select all objects from the n objects? This formula here, the combinations formula, allows us to answer that question. So in this case we end up with it's it's three factorial over two factorial times three minus two factorial. Um, which when you work that out uh, is equal to three. There's three ways to select uh pairings yeah uh, two things from those three groups and actually in to be specific the pairings that we could test is we could compare group a to group b we could compare group a to group c and we could compare group b to group c they're the three possible pairings we could have so technically we could undertake an independent samples t test here so an independent samples t test we could do here we could do an independent samples t test here and we could also do an independent samples t test here okay what happens well for each one of these t tests that we do the alpha is set at a specific rate and let's say 0.05 when we do this one, the alpha is at 0 0.05, and when we do this one, the alpha is at 0 0.05, okay? It just happens now we've got three experiments, okay? The analysis of variance has one specific alpha rate associated with it, where the separate independent samples t-tests all have an alpha, okay? So the question I really want to want to explore is, is that we know that when we do an, when an ANOVA that we fix the alpha rate, okay? The, the probability of committing a type 1.